About five years ago, I was working in a bar dreaming of better days when one of the regulars came in and gave me their Nikon FM2. This was a massive upgrade to the Nikon EM that I had at the time. I didn't know it then, but this was a camera that I would come back to again and again. I thought I'd take a look back at this simple mechanical SLR camera and some of the shots that it's given me along the way. Over the years, I've tried the Pentax 67, Contax G1, and Mamiya RB67, and I just keep coming back to the Nikon FM2. The Nikon FM and FM2 were pretty much known as the professional's backup cameras because they would work in all different types of weather and temperatures and they were completely mechanical. With the battery only controlling the light meter, this was a completely basic SLR camera that could house some of the nicest lenses going. Looking back on my own time shooting the Nikon FM2, the first thing I noticed is that it was kind of the perfect camera for me to learn film photography on. It's completely manual, so I had to learn all of the settings, exposure, all of your shutter speeds, your aperture, and all of the focusing. Because of this, I had to shoot really intentionally, and for me, I found that really helpful. Another thing about the FM2 is that it's kind of indestructible. This isn't something that I thought was that important to me until I started shooting the Contax G1. With the G1, I was always aware of it. I didn't necessarily want to take it out with me to certain things because I didn't want to break it. And that kind of halted my shooting experience. The FM2 is kind of like your weird cousin that does front flips into bushes because his parents are splitting up hard as nails. But unlike your cousin, the FM2 has shutter speeds that can go up to 4,000th of a second. The point is, the FM2 made it easy for me to take it wherever, whenever, so I could shoot much more often and not worry about whether it was going to break or get stolen. Having a camera that just did what it needed to do meant I could focus on what was important to me, which was to take good photos. Now it's up for debate whether I actually did that or not. But the point is, having very little else to consider means that you can really think about the important things like composition and shooting in a more creative way. It became a really intuitive way for me to shoot. And for me personally, it helped me to get into the mindset of seeing photographs, like you're in the zone and you're thinking about what's going on around you rather than what's going on with your camera. I kind of just want a camera to be a tool and not much else. If the tool becomes too important, then you start to rely on that rather than relying on your creativity and your style and your ability. I think that's why I exchanged the Pentax 67 for the FM2 once again, because the tool was absolutely unnecessary for me at the time. It was too big, I didn't get enough shots from it, and I was focusing on all of the wrong things for me at the time. When I went back to the FM2, I went on to take some of my favorite photos to date. Of course, the camera that I've used all this time may be the Nikon FM2, but for you, that camera might be the Canon A1 or Pentax K1000 or any camera really. I'm not here to tell you that the Nikon FM2 is the best camera ever. I'm saying it was the best camera for me for a long time. Something that can save you a lot of time and money is being aware of the fact that it's not about buying the best camera out there. It's about finding the best camera for you for the type of photography that you want to do. It's very easy to still take shit photos with brilliant cameras if you're not comfortable with them. So don't fall into that trap. As I mentioned before, the simplicity of the Nikon FM2 allowed me to think more 
about creativity and about composition and about all those important aspects of photography. If you can find a camera that you can become comfortable with and it allows you to shoot in more intuitively and to think about those important aspects more, then that's when you're hitting the sweet spot. The FM2 is also relatively cheap in comparison to some of the other cameras that I had tried out over the years. And for me, being broke as hell most of the time, that was really handy. The idea that you need to spend a couple of grand on a film camera in order to take the best possible photos is absolute bullshit. Get a camera, make it your own, get comfortable with it, that's when you'll take the best photos. The FM2 has the classic film camera look and build and it also has the classic shutter sound. Not only that, but it stows away pretty well because it's not that big for an SLR. One of the other things that I love about the FM2 is that most of the lenses that can attach to this camera are really good. The 50mm 1.8 bunny ears lens is really sharp and most of the digital lenses are like backwards compatible so you can use them on this camera. But here's the thing, I'm not here to sell you the FM2. It's a camera that I love for my own reasons. You need to find your own FM2 because you have different wants and needs in photography than I have. You might want auto everything, you might want something that's even smaller, you have to figure it out for yourself. When you find that camera that fits you best, that's when you'll start making your favorite work. I don't think it should be that complicated. It's not about getting a 5,000 pound camera. It's not about getting an insane lens. Yes, these things make a bit of a difference, but there's no use in those things if you don't want to go out and shoot them or they're too big and heavy for you to take out or you think, oh, if I got robbed, then that's so much money. I, I don't really trust it. Or you know, I don't want to put it in my bag in case it breaks. Remove as many barriers as you can and shoot as much as you can. And that's how you'll continue to get better and better. If you don't already know, I'm going to be traveling through America and Europe for the next few months. And I'm going to be pumping out some bad boy videos for you. If you think you're going to enjoy those, then drop me a subscribe and you'll be able to see them hopefully. I usually suggest a song at the end of my videos and today is no different. Go and check out a song called Finesse by Feels. It's got some euphoric Afro beats sort of vibes. And yeah, take care and probably watch this next video.